really fascinating content. Uh, we're now on our penultimate session, which is about the AR revolution. Uh, so we're going to be hearing from Penrose Studios, who describe themselves as a group of engineers, storytellers, and artists who are pushing the boundaries of mixed reality. To see what exactly they are talking about, please could you put your hands together, and we will hear from the founder, of CEO, founder and CEO of Penrose Studios, Eugene Chung. Thank you. Hello, Lisbon. My name is Eugene Chung, and I'm the founder and CEO of Penrose Studios. Penrose is a startup based in San Francisco, and we're a group of artists, storytellers, and engineers. And we're focused on our mission to define the next generation of human storytelling. The way I got into augmented and virtual reality uh, goes back many, many years ago. I grew up in a family where my mother is an accountant, a CPA, and my father is an opera singer. So I've always had this mix of left brain and right brain, creative and technical throughout basically my entire life. But what I realized growing up in the suburbs of Virginia was that the neighborhood kids didn't really watch a whole lot of opera. They played video games, they watched movies, but opera wasn't on their regular media diet. So I went back to the history books and I learned that opera used to be a great major art form. 150 plus years ago, there were these great opera houses. Uh, but of course, th that gave way to the moving picture in the 1890s. And today, we look at things on rectangular screens, much like the ones behind me. And it's incredible how that transformation occurred. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to encounter the next transformation, virtual and augmented reality as the next forms of storytelling, as the next forms of telling art. So a few years ago, I founded Penrose with this mission. And if you think about what we do, it breaks down into three major categories. The very first is we make premium content content that we hope and believe everyone around the world can love and appreciate, whether you're a toddler or whether you're a, a grandparent. The second part of what we do is the development of proprietary technology. We develop tools that allow us to become native spatial storytellers, tools where we can build directly inside of virtual and augmented reality. And finally, we're lucky to be in a space where we're innovating on new business models by necessity. So on the first piece, uh, you think about the works that we've done. Our very first piece was called The Rose and I, and it was debuted at Sundance in 2016. Shortly thereafter, our second piece, Alamette, had the very first red carpet world premiere at, for a virtual reality film at the Tribeca Film Festival. Thus far, people have taken pretty well to the work, or we've been very lucky. Uh, Wired calling it our Alimet, the first VR film masterpiece. Uh, BuzzFeed calling us the best argument for VR. Uh, TechCrunch likening us to the Pixar VR. And USA Today and the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, etc. But more important than the critical press, we've been very lucky that the consumer reactions to the work have thus far uh, been, uh, uh, been very good. Our latest piece is called Arden's Wake. Uh, it tells the story of a young woman living in a post-apocalyptic ocean and her search for independence. It's not yet released, but it has been through film festivals around the world. And we're lucky that when Venice, the oldest major film festival in the world, uh, decided to award a lion for best VR last year, uh, Mina, the main character of Arden's Wake here, was lucky to pick up the first uh, lion for this uh, very special prize. So more, more so than the content and uh, in, in conjunction with it is how do we create, how do we power this new form of storytelling? And for this, uh, we turn to the Penrose proprietary technology suite. There are three major categories that encompass this, native asset creation, rendering and simulation, and pipeline that brings it all together. 
Now, these are words on a page, so I have some videos that will hopefully give you a better sense of what this looks and feels like. This is one of our artists, Tyler, and what he's doing is he's using his hands to sculpt in space uh, using a tool that we have internally that we've codenamed PenPen. The town of Alumet is a town that floats in the sky. It's reminiscent of Venice. But what you don't know when you see it is that every building and every cloud in the sky was sculpted by hand utilizing our internal tools directly in VR. Our rendering artists and FX artists took these cloud shapes and they said, well, you know, these kind of look like clouds, but I think we could probably do a whole lot better. So they took these shapes and they decided to make volumetric clouds that run in real time, that our lighters could then go in light. Now, this may look simple because you've probably seen a movie that has fluffy volumetric clouds, but what you probably don't know is that companies like Pixar and DreamWorks might take an hour, maybe up to 24 hours, to render just one single frame of a cloud that looks fluffy like this. We have to render these clouds in real time, in virtual reality, 90 times a second. And that is a, a, multi, that is a huge difference relative to the way that you can render it before. So given these differences, we actually had to invent a brand new way of rendering a brand new technology, and that's what gives you the clouds you see in the world of Alumet. Our tools don't just go to asset creation, they also go to animation. This right here is a tool that we've codenamed Dollhouse. And what it does is it allows us to use our hands to animate objects in space. And what this does is it cuts out the middle, the middlemen, rather than having to animate on a flat screen and then go into uh, a real-time engine and then go put it into a VR headset, you can actually just animate on the fly as if you're moving a doll around uh, in real life. This next tool is a tool called Maestro, and the video explains it uh, uh, better than I kill, and so let's go to that. A lot of the magic at Penrose Studios happens from the cross-pollination of creative and technical talent. The most frustrating thing about working in this medium is not having the appropriate tools. VR is a new medium, and there aren't a lot of things specifically built for VR creation. Maestro is a tool that allows the Penrose team to collaborate inside of a fully virtual space. My life before Maestro was pretty much everybody on my back here trying to watch like a little screen and sometimes it was like just too dark and people couldn't see and everybody was just like crawling on top of my screen to try to see something. Building Maestro was a really interesting experience. It was truly the synthesis of working with both the creative and engineering teams really, really effectively. As we were doing reviews in VR with the whole team in there, we would come up with new features and then test it out the next day. Using the Penrose tool suite is my lifesaver. <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to do any of the sequences without them. It turns out it's a very natural collaborative workflow that just doesn't, doesn't feel odd at all. It just feels like, why have we not been doing this the whole time? I'm really proud of our engineering team because we have people who are both really strong technically and who can collaborate really well with artists, who know how to speak to artists in a non-technical way about things that are extremely technical. As a result, we're able to build things that are really amazing. I realized that I could just like roll my chair to the side and talk to the engineers and they would just like come up with such brilliant ideas. I think that what's going to drive the next wave of human engagement inside of virtual and augmented reality is social collaboration and social connection. With social VR, it doesn't matter where you are. You can be a thousand miles away anywhere in the world and you can still collaborate together. If I was to quantify the gains of Maestro, it's an exponential increase in our ability to execute on our goals. We're excited to be here, working with the incredible team at Penrose Studios to help define that next generation of human storytelling. Thank you. So that's a sneak peek behind the scenes, as well as a few of the amazing people I get to work with every day at Penrose. 
So the question is around what we do with these great technologies that we've created. And uh, our initial inclination is to think about the consumer applications to it. So we think about how we can use it in-house to make the best experiences and also eventually give the tools to the consumers so that they can make and create things and empower creators around the world to create amazing pieces of art and amazing stories. So finally, we're in lucky enough to be in a space where we are by necessity having to craft and create brand new ways of doing business, like, much like the earliest film pioneers. If we think of AR and VR, we believe earnestly that this is the next major computing platform. And if you look at the last 60 years, we've had five major computing platforms, starting all the way with the mainframe in the 1960s, going to the mini computer, then to the personal computer and desktop internet. And today, we live in the era of mobile computing. Every major platform has generated 10 times the number of users as the prior platform, which is why this is graphed on the logarithmic rather than the linear scale, because that top line would hit the sky otherwise. The, mass the opportunities around VR, AR, MR are massive. And the question is, how massive will they be? Well, luckily, our friends at Goldman Sachs have tried to estimate this. And their view is that within a few years, this will be a 23 to 182 billion dollar industry. And if we break this down further, and you look at data from the World Economic Forum, the view is that greater than 50% of the monetization in the coming years will come from creative industries, industries like storytelling and games. And this is no surprise when we realize the visceral nature of how VR and AR can take you to brand new places or take the world around you and bring new characters and new stories into that world. The first thought when it comes to virtual reality entertainment is video games, and that's great. If you look at the global video game market, it's a $110 billion industry growing at a pretty rapid 6% annual growth rate. But the narrative market, when you think about television and movies and and, uh, and scripted programming is almost six times bigger in size. And while, and the reason for this is that even though uh, video games tend to command higher average selling prices or ASPs, there are a lot more people who watch television, uh, who watch movies, who listen to stories, the things that we've been doing as a human species for thousands of years. So our view at Penrose is that what's going to drive this next great wave of computing will be stories. And that's why we have focused on our mission and our continuing mission to continue to define what this next generation of storytelling will be for years and years to come. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.